speaking. Hi, how are you today? Good, how are you? Not too bad. Uh, I imagine you're getting a lot of calls today. I was calling uh, to voice my concerns about the ban on the uh, Swiss style green. Uh, are you still are you still there? Still here, yeah. Okay, so so first of all, I'm curious. Are you getting a lot of phone calls uh, regarding this? Uh, there is uh, calls. Uh, I've only taken a couple myself, but uh, to be honest, there's really actually no uh, final decision made on that yet. You know? Okay, yeah, no. I just like I say, I just wanted to call and and voice my concern uh, as a Canadian, as a you know, as a law-abiding Canadian and whatnot, and uh, yeah, I, like basically, I don't want to rip you apart or or anything like that, because I'm sure uh, you get enough of that when you're at work. You're just trying to do your job, and uh, you know, my mother retired from the police station after 35 years, so I have a lot of respect uh, for law enforcement officers because you know, I'd come home and they'd be sitting at the kitchen table having coffee with my parents. So I, I have a lot of respect for police officers. But it's just I just don't understand how uh, how the RCMP can try and define and create a law without going through the legislative process. Now, like you say, it's not finalized, but uh, what concerns me is the fact that it's being pushed, first of all, even though it hasn't been finalized, the fact that it, uh, it's becoming a talking point, it really concerns me. And I'm just wondering uh, what you think about that. Well, really, like, you would know that I'm not able to discuss with you. I just know that the direction that, um, you know, we were given was basically it still was being, you know, reviewed and decided upon, and that there's been no uh, direction from the government for us to give any other information out. Okay, and uh, my other question is, like, uh, um, like, where does this come from? I mean, obviously there's going to be uh, somebody sitting at the head of the table in the RCMP department who makes these decisions. Um, so I was just curious as to uh, as to if we can put a name to the the person who's actually you know I, I can't see this being just a, a um, you know a, a large group of officers I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a great many of RCMP officers that still believe in liberty and still believe that we should have rights in this country that should not be infringed uh, by the government and now we're seeing that it's trying to be infringed by the police which is totally de facto of course your job is to uphold the law not to define it or create it so. I'm just curious, is there uh, somebody um, who uh, is actually behind this? Because um, uh, from what I've read, it, it is an RCMP thing, and the, the government um, right now is actually reviewing it. So uh, that, to me, tells me that uh, they are kind of sticking their n nose out of it, and this is more of an RCMP thing. Well, to be honest with you, sir, until however many days ago when this came out in the media, that's the first I heard about it. Oh, that's right. Really, you, you, like uh, this, there wasn't like a briefing within the RCMB department, especially to to brief uh, uh, the firearms department. I imagine, like, because uh, you guys are going to be the uh, the blunt of it. Of course, people are going to be calling you to voice their concerns. So there there was no uh, voicing. Uh, there was nothing, no briefing for your department in order to get you ready for the uh, the onslaught of phone calls that would be coming in. To be honest, no. So that's why, like, I think it's it's so new and in just in you know the first. Uh, of whatever that um, and I, I'm not sure exactly but it, it's not even anything I know anymore about, to be honest. Yeah, that's kind of crazy that uh, you guys wouldn't know about it, because of course people are going to be calling you. Uh, I tried calling a few of the other departments, but they they rec they they of course forwarded me and gave me your num number to call you guys. So that seems kind of strange. Now my, my my last question, I'll let you go, because I know uh, you, you've got uh, a lot to do today and probably for the next next few weeks you'll be getting a lot of phone calls. And that is, uh, if if in fact this legislation uh, for whatever reason does pass, um, how do the RCMP plan? on uh, getting these firearms out of the hands of people when, of course, we know that the gun registry was scrapped. So it would basically just be on a honor system that people come in and turn in these firearms and receive no compensation? And I have, like, no direction given to me to tell you that, sir. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know um, exactly what would happen in, in that at all because, uh, like, basically I, I know that like calls are being generated into us and then on the unfortunate part and that truly being honest with you I know nothing more about it than you do yeah no I, I totally I totally believe you uh, I can I can see like usually uh, within the the system the left hand doesn't quite often know what the right hand is doing <laughs> uh, 
But uh, just to let you know, I am video recording this conversation, and I'm going to be posting it on YouTube for people to uh, to see. Uh, so uh, I want to thank you for your time, and uh, I hope the RCMP does the right thing, and they uh, totally uh, get rid of this because I think it is unconstitutional. I think it infringes on our rights, and I think it's it's a very dangerous situation. First of all, for the public as well as the RCMP. So I just I just want to say that, and I just hope you guys, uh, you know, I just hope everybody settles down over this, and uh, we've got bigger problems in the world to worry about rather than uh, law-abiding Canadians who uh, don't break the law being treated like criminals. So I just want to thank you for your time, and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.